Greetings and welcome to our 12th episode of R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we give information regarding appeal status of Robert Sylvester Kelly and share conversations on topics discussed over the week relating to what R. Kelly fans are saying. Shout out to Kelly Nation. I'm Shine Wisdom back at you. I am feeling the comments, y'all. Thank you so much. Um, for responding. Shout out to Michelle W. Yes, they need to go ahead and set Robert Sylvester Kelly free. Incarceration is not the key in his particular case. Counseling after this may be very critical. It may be very vital. A shout out to Coco or Cookie Bala. I'm sorry. I appreciate your views. I think that you are a true Kelly fan. Thank you for supporting the channel. Sophia I. Girl, you know you're the greatest supporter of R. Kelly Appeal TV. We love you and hope the information brings you peace. HP, what's up, my friend? You are so right when sharing your views on freeing Kelly. I think this energy will assist the Capricorn in making better judgment calls, as you said, from now on, like who to befriend and who to keep the hell away from the success camp. Yeah, he'll, he'll have a time to shine and rise again. Uh, we would also like to give the R&B King a happy belated solar return. His birthday was yesterday. Uh, today is January the 9th. We are in the second week of the new year. And so it's a blessing to behold yet another year, Robert. Capricorn Nation, the energy of the goat is an element of fire, of earth. I'm sorry, fire is Sagittarius, uh, Leo and Aries. Um, so... It is a blessing to behold the energy of the goat in the, in the element of earth, also ruled by Saturn. This means there will be some lessons required over every 30 year cycle. We're going to go through something and we're going to, that return is going to be difficult, yet very fulfilling and rewarding. Let me know if you would like to learn more about what the cycle of the planet alignment and the moon phases are. Um, if you want to, I will put more information and incorporate that into the topic when discussing Appeal TV. But if I don't hear anything, I'll just keep it straight R. Kelly Appeal. So the topic many questioned this week about R. Kelly was why didn't he testify in his own federal trial? Well, going through a trial on either a state or federal level is very taxing and extreme. Um, as a criminal justice major, I have to say that when we are looking at what is going on inside the courtroom, when we are the one on trial, it's very stressful. So many people don't handle the stress well and they become agitated, irrit irritable and nervous. So even if they're not guilty, the jury may wrongfully interpret these as signs of guilt and use them to enter a verdict of guilty. So according to the Fifth Amendment of the Constitution, under the law, one can refuse to answer, um, and that is a protection, preventing one from incriminating themselves or perjuring themselves on the stand. Um, let's discuss the handling of stress during, say, the Gail King uh, interview. He was very frustrated, very frustrated, very emotional. So one can only imagine how he kept himself together during the witness testimonies. Um, <laughs> you know, being judged and being told that you did this and you have to make sure that you hold your composure is one thing, but having to get on the stand and fight for your life during a trial that is one-sided already, it is very extreme. So it was not stated either way, whether he became hostile during these deliberations, but I'm sure in any instance, if he had a cleared his throat at a certain time, it would have been announced that uh, he was doing something in, um, in contempt. So I'm quite sure that it would have been stated if something of that nature had occurred. Here's a strong point to consider as well. The world has nothing to use against what he could have said out of context. They can't take anything out of context because he didn't say anything. There is nothing on the record except, quote, I did not do those things I am being accused of doing end quote. That is all the world has to go on relating to R. Kelly and his federal case of 2021. Other than their own beliefs and testimony of the witnesses is the only thing that anyone has to really go on. So what would you think if a defendant didn't testify in, a, in their own criminal case? 
What if they didn't testify? And would you believe that they're more guilty or less guilty? Or do you think that they're hiding something? You know, that's a good question. So I would love to hear some comments on that. Again, the defendant has the right to testify and the right not to testify. If a defendant chooses not to testify, the fact that the defendant did not testify cannot be held against him in a court of law. So Robert Sylvester Kelly did what he was probably told by his defense counsel to do. The court should have been instructed that the defendant has a constitutional right not to testify, that the choice not to testify could not be held against R. Kelly, and that R. Kelly should have at the time been presumed innocent, regardless of whether he testified or not. So this is where I think that he had a serious dilemma because he was already judged based on the witness testimonies um, from the Lifetime uh, docuseries. And that was already there waiting for him in trial. So that statement in and of itself has been treated unfairly since 2008. He never received that fair and impartial trial. He should have gone overseas. He should have been somewhere where nobody knew who he was. This is looking very important within the appeal process for the king of R&B. Now, how will this affect an appeal and overturning of a conviction or a retrial? This is a great question. An appellate court may dismiss a case after it has reversed the conviction on grounds of a bad arrest. Um, a reversal can occur when the decision of the court of appeals is that the judgment of the lower court was incorrect and the lower court will be asked to vacate the original judgment and retry the case or throw it out altogether. So there are several ways that this can be retried and you know, resubmitted to the criminal justice system. Now at this time, I would like to state that public opinion based on 10 of R. Kelly Nation fans have stated that it was best that he pled the Fifth Amendment during his federal trial so that nothing would be held against him by those who railroaded him in court. I I kind of go on that side as well because, yeah, he didn't have a chance. He didn't have a chance. I also want to go to something else that I heard that stunned me the other day. I was doing some research and I ran across a conversation about R. Kelly becoming distant with his fans and making it all about business. He wasn't the same R. Kelly. He was maturing in his um, in his uh, business. So he was asked to entertain a party of 50 and he charged that party $20,000 and the haters got mad, y'all. And that was when people started coming out of the woodwork about Kelly not paying child support. And I truly feel based on the responses, I truly feel that Robert was trying to be muted by the powers that gave him that first opportunity after street performing because they weren't getting the royalties that they should because they weren't controlling the money. R. Kelly was then becoming his own independent name. So when he decided to venture out on his own, that was when the real chaos started to come again, again. I was told that it was a blessing that he never used hardcore drugs because it would have been super easy for them to plant a health cause like many who have been recently aparted or departed from Hollywood for, through opiate drug use, overdose, conspiracies, health issues. What are all the views, you know, that we could have looked at other than incarceration? And I think that's what saved, that's what's going to save R. Kelly because now he can get himself together, get his bearings right. What are your views on this matter? I would really like to know. Um, we all have heard the rumors, seen the tabloid headlines and wrestled with the uneasy gossip that has befallen the great Mr. Kelly. So what do you think about um, just the whole situation about stepping out on his own, becoming a more independent version of R. Kelly. Do you think that this, that this incarceration and all of these old situations that was back in 2008 played a significant role in how the docuseries set up itself, how the Gail King in, uh, interview went? Do you think that was all part of a scheme, a plan? Give me your views. Um, Let's just keep him, his family and children in meditation, that they will be more than victorious after this situation, that they will persevere through this trial because we all have our trials and our, you know, crosses to bear for all those who are affected by the stress of 
of the love you have for R. Kelly, please be mindful to the memory of his music and how it has made life easier, happier, and at a balance for millions of people. And we're still promoting and supporting his cause of love. You know, this is during a pandemic too. So don't be, don't be thrown back by the fact that, you know, keeping us at a distance and not being intimate, not being loving, not being in relationships is part of the whole plan. It's part of the plan to destroy the humanity, to change the process of the conscious awareness to what life has to represent, to what is robotically being designed at this time in order to create for our lives. You know, I was even told that, you know, wearing a mask is a slave, you know, pro, um, a, a slave, sub, a subconscious slave uh, format that is trying to bring slavery back, saying that the division, you know, it's just the same thing. The mask is just, you have the colored water fountain and you have the Caucasian water fountain. So there are many people in the industry also trying to take his place, but they never will. There is no legend greater than R. Kelly in the music industry of r and None that will come after him that will equate to him since he has now been denied, de denounced his kingship. Can I get a holla? Kelly Nation, can I get a holla on that? Because it was amazing how people who may even have the last name of legend was trying to hate on them. And their last name is legend. Like, really? No, that was wrong, John Legend. Totally, totally wrong. Why? Because the fans determine who is the greatest, who is the world's greatest, the last man standing. This is why I keep R. Kelly Appeal TV moving so that we will not forget his legacy. Um, and that is also the other reason why I want to continue to have comments. So it's not just one-sided. It's just not me saying that this is what I feel because I'm very passionate about Robert Sylvester Kelly on who he is as the man and R. Kelly as who he who he is as a superstar. So I thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of the R. Kelly Appeal TV. Remember to always keep it 100. Happy New Year, new beginnings, new focus, new direction, and new positivity. Push that energy out into the universe, whatever you want it to be, because 2022 is all about you and 23 will be all about me. <laughs> so, so we will see you next Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a great and blessed week and we'll see you soon.